I do it regardless, though. Like I have to. I, yeah, that yeah. second week gets rough. I got, I got, like, I got my second cut in 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 six days, mm. and that was tough. Mm. I was like, all right, I know you didn't have to do that. I'm, and my guy's flawless; he don't miss. Yeah, that was tough. Like haircuts ain't barbers is making bread. When I was when I used to go to the barber get my haircut, it was it was like I think it was twenty, and I'd give him extra five. Mm-hmm. It's got to be yeah. forty now. Forty, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's 40 with the tip for me, pause. Oh, jeez. As a loyal radio listener, I can't tell you how much it pisses me off when you guys do this. You come back from break and just continue a conversation. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah that's what we do. What, am I butting in? Well, I, oh, yeah. Excuse me, I'm driving here trying to get entertained. Am I Am I bothering you? Am I just we, human? People ask all of the time who don't understand like the YouTube thing, particularly people like in our business. Like, so what do you do during commercials? We talk. We talk. We just keep talking, and when the radio comes, if we're in the middle of a conversation, you think we're you think we're going to start the conversation? No, we're just going to keep talking. Kenny's a master at it too. He'll pick it up like like we've been all together for the last ten minutes. I'm like, yo, yo, I don't know what's going on. Well, and, and, and every once in a while, I'll remember like, hey, we've got a radio audience who who might not be listening. We are who might not be watching. We appreciate everybody uh, wherever you're at, uh, allowing us to be a part of your day. Matt joined uh, the live stream here. Mm-hmm. Uh, looking fantastic. His beard's lined up. And now Matt's a big TV star. Yep, yep. So I asked him, you know, how often he gets his hair cut. It's because he's he's got that he's got that freshly cut look. And mm-hmm. I was on point. He had got his hair cut today. And we know Matt's, you know, Matt hit Matt the, the next level of stardom is when Matt's comfortable with the with the every seven day cut. Oh yeah. See, that's that's what you gotta do, man. I well, think hold on. Do- if I could, if I could, I absolutely would. Cause I love, I love going to the barbershop. I love right. it. It's like, it's like therapy to me going there. So I would do that. I would do it every three days if I could, to be honest with you. I don't okay. know. If my, I don't know if my wife would agree with that, but I would. You need to bring uh, Matt to your barber. Okay. Yeah, you be looking. I mean, he don't look bad now. I'm just saying I can imagine Matt with that look. I don't know that Matt's hair is conducive for what I do with mine. Cause I'm, that, I can, I can make mean? this. I can make this work for a little while longer, but there's a certain point where it's just not going to work anymore. And I, we're, 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 I, I got time. I'm going to, you're, you're good. I'm going to, I got, I got time, but my barber is a, a, a master. Mm. He's, 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 he's a master. Um, it's not how we intended to start the show with that. <laughs> now, what do you guys got going on this weekend? You got football tonight or tomorrow? Uh, I actually am probably catching a football game tonight. There's a big game tonight, and I can't remember who's playing. Isn't it um, Folsom? Yeah. And... Fo- well, it's tomorrow night, not tonight, right? No. Well, there is a big game tonight. There's a big Thursday night game because they're still they still got a little bit of the referee shortage, um, so they gotta sometimes stretch some games mm-hmm. to Thursday. So there's a big game tonight. I might I might check out, but I'll be at our ABC 10 game of the week tomorrow night, which is a big one. State champion Grant at uh, Oak Ridge. Huge oh, game. let's go. Huge mm. game. So that's our game of the week. So I'll be out there and um, doing doing pregame stuff in our six o'clock show and then have a post game thing at, at the eleven thirty. But that's a massive game for week two. Um, yeah. But there's some huge games everywhere. And then we just dropped it today. We're actually doing a, a fan voting system now for game of the week for next week. And there's some major games happening next week, too. So, I mean, football in this area is so good it's stacked every week there's a game to go to so if you're a football fan and you're trying to kill time before the start of the nfl season like go out on a friday night you'll find a good game absolutely can't wait till you guys go to mcclatchy go to hughes stadium for big mcclatchy game you'll be at hughes stadium on saturday though won't you i won't actually that's that's my day off i'll be competing in a little uh a little golf tournament with some family members so i'll be i'll be enjoying my like three saturdays off a year that's that's one of them (laughs) <laughs> well, enjoy that, my friend. Let's let's stick with football before we transition to the Kings and gripe about some lists that are out there. Um, what do you think of the 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 news yesterday? You 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 spent some time at training camp uh, this year with the San Francisco 49ers and it, it was I don't want to, I'm gonna be careful because of Kenny's feelings. It wasn't announced that Sam Darnold <laughs> was the uh, backup quarterback, but it got out that Sam Donald was the backup quarterback and uh, it wasn't really stated what Trey Lance's position with the team was going to be. We kept hearing the term uh, explore all options. John Lynch uh, said today he expects uh, Trey Lance to be with the San Francisco 49ers moving forward. Uh, what did you think of that 
whole, whole ordeal yesterday. Well, first off, you guys and then Kyle Madsen on the fly absolutely killed it. Because as soon as I saw or I saw it go down, I immediately turned on D'Lo and Casey. And I was like, okay, uh, I, I'm listening to this basically all day. Uh, so y'all absolutely killed it. I, I wanted another three hours of uh, Kenny conspiracy theory of Trey, mm-hmm. Trey putting the people out. And then, I of course, that out. I did and, sniff that out. And, and, and did, D'Lo, yeah. when you uh, you, when you were monitoring the live stream that magically disappeared, man, it was like something. something <laughs> this is a special day. Special day in Niner Nation, but um, I, I wasn't surprised by it. Like I was, I, it was like like a surprise to more of like a wow they actually did it or did finally it. did it versus wow that's a bad decision. And I know Kenny, you didn't necessarily agree with it. And I I understand your argument completely. I, I mean, basically, my takeaway was the Niners made this decision knowing full well that they hope that they never have to even worry about a backup quarterback. Period. That Brock mm-hmm. Purdy never steps off the field unless it's because the defense is coming on. Like that's, that's what their hope is. And I understand, like, I I think, I can't remember who made the point yesterday, but you made it perfectly. Like Kyle Shanahan and John Lynch have to sit across the table from Kittle, have to sit across the table from Armstead, have to sit across the table from Trent Williams to say, look, y'all, like, I think Kenny, it was you that said this, like, like we're going for it right now. And the reality is like, as much as we love Trey, and I think Trey is extremely well liked in that organization, in that locker room period, no matter what. Like they know that their their window is right now, and they can't afford to give Trey the four, six, eight, whatever, however many weeks it takes for him to get comfortable. Plus, he wouldn't get that anyway because again, he's going to be backing up Brock Purdy, so his role is going to be inconsistent at best. So, I hope he remains a part of the organization for the sake of the 49ers. I think every interaction that I've had with him, I've never had like a one on one interaction with him, only in a, in a um like a press conference setting or a locker room setting scrum setting. And he's been nothing but professional and positive. So I think he'll handle it the absolute right way. Uh, I think it's the right choice by the Niners and still one that can come back a year or two from now, especially if he goes to what was it, Minnesota or whatever it is. And he gets his eight weeks and then looks really, really good. Like it might be one of those things that is tough to swallow, but at the same time, Niners win a Super Bowl this year. Nobody cares. Like at that point, it's like, whatever. The, the, the draft pick trade, whatever. doesn't matter. We won a Super Bowl. So that's the goal, and that solves every problem. Yeah, man. Everything that they do with building this roster and putting everything together has to be with the thought of this is the best we're putting out there. Starters, backups, all that other stuff. Even with that being said, I said a number of different times. I'm going to continue to say I would have had Trey Lance's QB2, kind of wishing upon a star. That's how I would have went about it. You, and if I was the if I was the coach and I did that, there'd be people on B Low and JC or the morning mm-hmm. row saying, you need to take emotion out of it. You need to do what you have to do to win, all this other stuff. That'd be the flip side of it. I just think as much as I like Trey Lance, as much as I wanted him to be at the very least QB2, I didn't have a strong argument to sit up there and say today on august 24th he's a better quarterback than sam darnold i you could say they're even you could say it's really close whatever i get all that but i can't say yeah he deserves it because he's better and i i can't do that and that doesn't even mean sam darnold's super good but just from what we've seen in the preseason and i'm sure what they people have seen in in practices i can't say trey trey lance is a better quarterback than sam darnold today Kenny, here's the major scenario that goes through my mind that that makes me wholeheartedly agree with you. Worst case scenario happens again. You get to the NFC Championship game, Brock Purdy gets hurt. It's mm-hmm. the NFC Championship game, and more specifically the Super Bowl, where you need playmaking from your quarterback typically to get the job done. Mm-hmm. And who do I trust to make a play more, or to be that playmaker more? It's Trey Lance, even though I have not seen him make too many i believe the type of player he is he's capable of making those plays Mm -hmm. but based off of what i know of sam darnold i know he's not i don't believe he's that playmaker i think sam uh i think darnold is safe i think uh, darnold's a pocket passer that if you have a four week stretch during the regular season he can get you to four and oh simply because he can make the right plays make the right reads and allow that amazing offense and defense to carry him through but if it's a one game for it all against the Chiefs or whoever it may be, and you're going to need a moment where your quarterback is making that play, escaping the pocket, bootleg, making an incredible throw, 
avoiding a sack in a big moment, I think Trey's the guy I trust there more, even if I haven't seen it. Do you believe Kyle when he says, what was the, t- t- a fluid situation? Yeah. The, did you believe Kyle when he says the, the backup quarterback position is a fluid situation? Uh, uh, uh Yes. Uh, yes, I, I think I, I think I did because I genuinely think that it was a a difficult decision for both. Um, I should say it was a difficult decision for the Niners. I think like to me, my read on the situation is part of their stubbornness with trying to make Trey work came from the package that they gave up to get him. Mm-hmm. But also, I think I mean, I think it's fair for the Niners to be afraid of what Trey Lance still very much could be. Like it's one thing if he just wasn't good enough, like he'd gotten opportunities and he just straight up lost his job to Mr. Irrelevant. Then at that point, you're just like, no one can blame us, but there's still man. People can blame us if we get this wrong. And especially for a a, a head coach who some might say is overrated in Kyle Shanahan because he's put up there in the upper echelon of coaches yet. He hasn't won anything yet. And he's labeled as this quarterback whisperer or, or, or genius that, had his guy and then ultimately went in another direction. I don't blame Shanahan for the direction he's going in. I feel like he has to, but there's still a scenario where he comes out losing his job and he looks like a failure here. If the, if the team doesn't get it done this year and Trey goes on somewhere else and becomes the guy that they believe he could be. Yeah. That's just, that's, that's, I get, I get that. I get that. I get that. I just think that's a tough way to live. Yeah. You've got to make a decision in the now. Right. And I think he's making the right decision. I think he's making the absolute right decision. It's just still a decision that has lingering like this. It's not just you chose one starting quarterback over another. You chose a starting quarterback over an unproven commodity that you traded a lot for that still has all the upside on the planet. Right. If he can stay healthy, like it's just the fear of the unknown that you can't operate like that when you have when it's a results driven league and your window is right now, you can't operate like that. But I can understand that being hard. Like it might make uh, Shanahan stay up at night thinking well, about yeah. what if sure. and, and think sure. of, think about the the other aspect of it and the other side to it. I know people have a lot of emotion and, and a lot invested in Trey Lance, but what if. Let's just say, for argument's sake, Sam Darnold's better, and the Niners, whatever, whatever the record is, or whatever, it's not very good, or whatever. And they ask, and and Kyle Shanahan chose Trey Lance over Sam Darnold, and when they're seven and nine or whatever, but well, why did you choose Trey Lance? Well, I thought Sam Darnold was better, but I thought you know we, the price was so much that we paid for Trey Lance, we had to see what that was. You're getting killed for that. I'll take that. Uh, I'll take stuff coaches will never say for 500, Alex. <laughs> right. Absolutely. But like, you would be getting killed for that. Mm-hmm. You chose the guy that that is – You didn't the, think was good. Yeah. Or the, as good, I should as say. As good because yeah. you wanted to uh, – because you paid three first-round uh, picks for him? That would be ridiculous. Mm-hmm. He went in this situation, and this is what I can respect. And you say I'm caping for him or whatever, is he said, look, man, it's going to look bad. It's going to be a bad look. People are going to, uh, you know – kill me for it but i think this guy is better i think this guy is better i understand what that looks like as far as like man we're just just punting on a guy that we gave a lot of capital up for doesn't matter i think this guy is better i've got to put the best team out there i can i can respect that see i think he's i think he's making or taking the the less safe path because i I don't think he cares about sympathy necessarily but i think the majority of people would be sympathetic if he made the decision that trey was the guy and believed in trey and then trey just didn't work out or got hurt again like i think more people would sympathize with that because of trey's upside than because of what we know sam darnold to be i think some would say sam darnold is the safer quarterback choice for backing up brock purdy and i agree with that but i think for the franchise and for optics going with Trey Lance would have been the safer choice. And in choosing Darnold, I think Shanahan clearly is one, putting the message out there. We can't wait. We're going for it now. And Mm -hmm. two, we genuinely believe that Darnold is ready to help this football team right now more than Trey Lance is. And that's, that's the, that's the bottom line. 
Well, there's probably two different conversations, right? Like Trey Lance is probably safer in the court of public opinion, but Sam Darnold is probably safer on the actual field. Football field yeah. You know, and, we're, and you, once again, where do you want your coach to be right at? Mm-hmm. On the football field or in the court of, court of public opinion? I um, This actually just, just dawned on me as Matt was talking. We're, and I don't think anyone would care because he's not a 30-year player with, you know, so much invested in, in terms of draft equity. You realize if Sam Darnold had been the, if, if Trey Lance had been the second quarterback, we might be in the same exact position with Sam Darnold mm. because Darnold might be like, Hey, I have no chance here. Can you just get me out of here? Mm. Like trade me, um, cut me, just give me an opportunity to where like, I, cause if I'm the third quarterback here, I'm not going to get to play. Right. Give me, give me a, a, put me in a position to where like I can go play somewhere. Like I, I battled it out with Trey. You, you don't think I won? Cool. Like let me go somewhere. The, they could be in a similar position. Again, the reaction would be different, but the, we could be running you, you, if they had gone Trey Lance instead of Sam Darnold. Sam Darnold may have asked to, yo, get me yeah. out of here. And that's that's a great point too. Not to cut you off, Matt, but that's a great point as well that you just made. And you also look at the situation where. I feel like if we're if you're just if you're really being fair about the whole situation, what's the thing that people always say? Oh man, he's doing trade dirty. He didn't give him an opportunity to play with the ones or look who he had to play with or whatever. Sam Darnold played with the same people. Mm-hmm. And if everybody is saying Sam Darnold stinks and he's sorry and all this other stuff, he might be, but he's never played with players that he would be playing with in San Francisco as far as talent level. Right. He's never yep. had that. He's been with two of the worst franchises in the last five years. Both had number – the Jets had a number two pick. The Panthers had a number one pick. That means the team stink, mm-hmm. all right? He's never played with this type of talent. So people clamor for Trey Lance to play with this type of talent to, to be fair to him. If we're being fair, you should say the same thing about Sam Darnold. Yep, 100%. I mean, you could talk yourself in circles in this in this conversation period because again, it's like yeah. I've I've never seen a safe team win a Super Bowl, and you would argue we could argue again on the field that that Sam Darnold is a safe choice for an experienced veteran backup of your your starting quarterback who's young, but again, is that is that the safe choice for actually winning a football game when you got to have it? Like I I, I and. I don't know. I think either way, I, it was a catch twenty two. I think no matter what decision the the forty nine ers made, it was going to be criticized and scrutinized. And the only thing that cures that is winning the whole damn thing. So that's that's what they're going for. Mm. Uh, let's transition here, Matt. Um, let's start with De'Aaron Fox. Uh, De'Aaron Fox, the top five point guard uh, in the league, in your opinion? Absolutely. I did a whole podcast on it. He's number five to me. Luca, Steph, not in any particular order. Dame and SGA. That's my guess. SGA was in there. Luca, Steph for sure. It probably was Dame. Yeah, I think it was Dame. Yeah, I think that was the five. Yeah. That's, that's the, I think that's the, I on. like I looked at the I looked at that list in the athletic. I just would have moved De'Aaron where James Harden was and that that puts De'Aaron as a, a, a top five point guard. Mm. Someone's missing, and I can't think of who because yeah. SGA. Who, oh, Ja, that's right. Yeah, they had Ja in the top five. That's yeah, right. I, I had Ja seventh, Tyree sixth, James Harden 112th. <laughs> James Harden. Forgot what about the man. point guard. James James Harden I had ranked below, um, what is his name, Stockton. Uh, not John Stockton, but his his son that was in the, the Kings G League system for forever. David Stockton. David? Yeah, yeah, James Harden uh, just below Dan Dickow. Yeah, Ray oh, McCallum. Wow, that sounded inappropriate. Don't do that to his That's, name. <laughs> I didn't do anything. I just said that sounded inappropriate. <laughs> you can't just be throwing names out there like that. Jeez, sorry about that, Matt. Goodness gracious. It felt that that I I do you think De'Aaron gets in in now. Oh, De'Aaron finally had a good season. Got to do it again. Do you think he gets punished for being on the Sacramento Kings? Yeah, in, in, this, in this scenario. He's been punished his entire career for being on the Sacramento Kings. Mm. Like, and, and it's, it's, he's been punished by the Sacramento Kings, unfortunately. But, mm. uh, I mean, playing in Sacramento, there's naturally, like, people aren't paying attention. And, again, a lot of the people making these lists, especially the center's list, are people that didn't watch Kings basketball until the playoffs started. Like, mm. until Sacramento was literally forced in front of them, they did not watch Kings basketball. Yeah. 
Yeah. De'Aaron Fox has not been th- – this. the level that Fox went to last season was the highest level that we've seen him go to. Absolutely, bar none. But De'Aaron Fox was having moments in big games throughout his entire career. He's been doing it his entire career. And I think we talked about this last week. Once Fox got the stage that John Morant and these other point guards have got, he was going to show. He was going to show people and he was going to show out. And lo and behold, he has one of the best playoff debuts in NBA history. Like it doesn't, it doesn't surprise me. Fox been doing it, but because he plays in Sacramento, I said, if Fox played in LA, if Fox played in Miami, if Fox played in hell, put him in a, like it, put him in Dallas. If Fox played in any of these markets and played the exact same way, the exact same numbers, the exact same struggles, he would be 10 times the household name that he is right now. Mm. It's, and it's, it's the Sacramento. I mean, curse is not the right word because of course we love it here but that's stigma yeah that's the reality of the situation and and fox has had to work through that and now that he's done that and been there it's oh we got to see him do it again we got to see him do it more it's always like there's always going to be glass half empty with with the kings until they win a championship really and even then no no i was gonna they can't win another one (laughs) (laughs) i was gonna say this about this and i think you're 100 correct both you guys 100 correct about this the thing that I will say is, and in fairness, is I think that the NBA and the powers that be, well, it's not even really the NBA when you talk about this, Matt. It's more the, the the writers, right? But I do think the NBA is ready to give the Kings and De'Aaron Fox that platform. They're ready to give him the John Morant treatment, you know, regardless if he plays in Sacramento or not. National, we talk about national TV and stuff like that. But I just look at the 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 commercials. Fox is on there, like they're they're ready. Like they're NBA is kind of sitting there waiting for them. Like yeah, not like hey, do it again because we don't believe you. They're like hey, please do this again so we can strap a rocket to your back and you could be one of these dudes. So I, you know, we're always talking about the the national media and, and the NBA, you know, sliding the Kings. I do think they're ready to elevate the Kings and De'Aaron Fox if they can continue to win, like I think they will. I think it goes beyond Aaron Fox. I think the NBA is ready to elevate Sacramento. I mean, Mm -hmm. 17 of the 22 national TV games being in Sacramento, it's not a coincidence. It's because, I mean, you you can start with the beam and end with a fan base that didn't go anywhere, that saved the team, gorgeous state-of-the-art arena in downtown, and like that support. That was what the Kings in the 90s and 2000s, that was what we were known for. I mean, the cowbell started as an insult and became a like a lifestyle, a representation of these people. Like and that and that traveled, that got around to where it's still referenced today, and it's been referenced throughout the 20 years that the Kings were or almost 20 years that the Kings were irrelevant. Like the NBA wants to showcase Sacramento because in so many ways, Sacramento is what's right about the NBA product. Like you develop a you develop a a team in front of a fan base that some say has nowhere else to go, but we know with the amount of like Bay area transfers over here. And we know like no disrespect, uh, like uh, Sacramento Republic FC they're They're not MLS yet, but Sacramento Republic FC has interest. There's a huge interest in the giants, huge interest in the A's huge interest in the, in the Raiders and 49ers. This is a sports town. So fans have options. It's not like they're the Kings are all they have, but even, but they treat it like that. They, tr- they treat the Sacramento Kings like that's all they have. The same way De'Aaron Fox has compared it to Kentucky and compared it to a, a college town. So Sacramento is is ready to be showcased. And the NBA is following suit because I think the NBA realizes that what, the Sa- what Sacramento has, an exciting team that plays a fun brand of basketball supported by a loyal, passionate fan base and a cool gimmick to boot that shoots 100 feet into the sky – it's a full package of what the NBA wants to show their casual fan or common fan. You know, I'm going to severely derail the show here yeah, for a minute. Crazy, bro. Triple H, the chief executive officer of WWE, just announced that the performer known as Bray Wyatt passed away today. Wow. What? Yeah. No, no, Unexpectedly no, no, no. earlier today. 36 years old. His absence from television over the last. I don't know, nine, eight, nine months or so has been speculated on from everything from injury to like mental health um, to a variety of different things. Um, but yeah, he, he passed away. Mm. That That is stunning in, in it, a really bad way. 
It really is. Um, I don't know how to follow that up. That is. Boy, does that make oh, his. Shocking. That what makes, was, go ahead, Matt. I was just going to say that makes his return promo that. that Oh man! That he cut that makes that even more. That's gonna be that's gonna live forever now. That's gonna be a that's a that's gonna be a tough rewatch. Yeah, that 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 promo he cut was really really intense. The first time he uh, picked up a mic after his return, his his return didn't last super long, and it it had been speculated on about where you know he. I I think it kind of coincided with like some Vince McMahon returning stuff, and I don't think those two ever really saw eye to eye. Then there was. You know, talk of of um, him having some you know mental health issues. Obviously, no cause of death is is, is given in Triple H's uh, tweet. But um, thirty six years old, man. I think we just said yesterday when we learned Terry Funk passed away. At least Funk was he was seventy nine years old. Uh, there was a time where we were talking about wrestlers passing away at forty, and we used the example of Rick Rude and Mister Perfect, British Bulldog. And he leaves behind. I think they got two two kids. Him and uh, the yeah, the ring announcer. Yeah, uh, I, f- I forgot I her name. Two. I'm sorry. It, no, uh, Jojo. Or, yeah, that was. Jo- yeah, that was. That was her name. Yeah, WWE. Yeah, that was. That was it. But I think they had two kids together, man. And that's just two really young kids because they, ain't, you know, not that old. But man, yeah, he actually has. He he has four kids. I don't know if all four of them are with uh, Jojo. Um, but yeah, he four kids. Oh, and I didn't I didn't know this before. I think somebody said it. You guys told me who who's what's his family lineage again? Mike Rotunda, uh, IRS. Ah, oh, that's right. Um, that's right. It's his the, son, right? Yeah, yeah. It, I, IRS. He was um he was a part of the '80s boom with like Barry Windham, and then he, mm-hmm. he he his name was Mike Rotunda. Then he went off and he came back, and I think most people know him as IRS. That was such an over the top character. Mm-hmm. He was the tax man. <laughs> um, Bray Wyatt was he was an extraordinary. He was a he was you know he a lot is made about like WWE creative. He was like the driving force behind his characters, mm-hmm. and that that that. Uh, that Colt Wyatt family thing. He was the driving force behind that. He was a really, really creative mind. He was the the main guy behind the the Firefly Funhouse match, mm-hmm. or you, you know what I mean? Not the yeah. match, but whatever, the whatever, the, the, whatever the, yeah, whatever it was. Yeah. Uh, he was he was he he was a big part of the creative. But he was a really, really creative mind, um, which is why I think fans clamored for him so much every time he went away. Um, he was he was the support of massive moment out of after massive moment after massive moment for so many different like the amount for someone who was relatively young in the industry he put over so many people just by being with them and he mm-hmm. even put over guys that have been around forever he put Randy Orton over in the few that mm-hmm. they had the yeah. Wyatt family versus the Shield he put the Shield over in a massive oh, way Oh that was so huge yeah. He put Daniel Bryan over in a massive way when he was Daniel was brainwashed and then had the the yes chant on top of the one steel of the, cage One of the great moments in raw history where 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 the ill advised Daniel Bryan joins the Wyatt family moment and then he, and then he you know he 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 leaves that in, in, in that moment that you're talking about right there where apparently he was concussed. Uh, Bray sells it like a million dollars and Daniel climbs the top of that cage and the entire arena is is doing that yes mm-hmm. chant. And that's where, you know, that that, that, that whole experience of Daniel yeah. Bryan kind of exploded. He put John Cena over, like with the whole world in his hands and everything that mm-hmm. he did with John Cena too and the Firefly. Like he was unbelievably creative. And I mean, I think I remember Triple H before his return, Triple H did a long sit down interview with Ariel Hawani and was asked about Bray. And some of the things Triple H said about Bray made people excited that that Bray was going to potentially come back. But he was talking about how like he's so creative that he almost went too far and had to be reeled back in. Mm -hmm. But what a blessing for entertainment when you have that as a virtue you're so creative you go too far not you're not creative enough like and i i can't even imagine 
with the stuff that he ended up putting out there and how good it was, if he had full creative liberty and full creative license to do anything and everything he wanted, I have a, I have a feeling it would have worked out the same way new day worked out the way it did. Like, cause mm. new day was not a creative choice by WWE. That was those three and they let them go and they turned into something that still resonates wow. today. Yeah. It just dawned on me. Two of the three Wyatt members are gone. Yep. Man. Yep. That's just terrible. And and also, um, you you got. I, I'm not Daniel Bryant. The Yes Movement was was huge or whatever, but and even the Wyatt family, that was huge as well. The Fiend was oh, yeah. one of the biggest roles last twenty years mm-hmm. in wrestling. I and mean, they killed it right here in yeah, Sacramento. Yeah. WWE did yeah. nothing for it. Yeah. yeah. WWE okay. did nothing for it. They the just had Fiend. that gem in their lap was crazy i remember i remember that when they made the fiend title belt Mm -hmm. and it sold for something crazy yeah right like the fiend. it was it was right before i mean well hell it helped launch literally the the bloodline and roman reigns and what he did because once again you talk about putting somebody over you put over roman reigns as the the tribal chief that we know right now three years ago yesterday yeah yeah and that but that fiend character, my goodness! I want he did a lot of that. Nah, he did it in front of people because I was about to say he did a lot of that in COVID, but he he got a good amount in front of people. Yeah, there was a lot of it was a lot of it was COVID, it, and and that and that's where the the Firefly Funhouse mm. segments and vignettes came from, which mm. were you know really cleverly done with the you know the 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 different puppets and like you could start to read you know they. One of the puppets was based off his NXT character. Mm. Uh, one of the other puppets was um, based off, I think it was like Sister Abigail. Like they, like everything he did meant something. Mm. Like nothing, every moment he had on television meant something. It was never thrown away. Mm-hmm. Uh, he made the most of his TV time, even if we you know, got frustrated with the creative at, at, at times. Like he made, he made the most of, of his time on television for sure. I always got frustrated with like, he was buried payoff after payoff after payoff. The the fact that he could be as over as he was and as intriguing as he was and pile up the amount of losses that he piled up because every big match, his opponent went over every it- single time. I think it's because everyone, yeah, and, you, you know, you, I think it's a credit to the way the fans felt about him. Mm-hmm. Like, yo, you could bury him if you want to. We're going to keep cheering him, yeah. and we're going to keep wanting to see him because we know what you appear not to know, and that's he's really, really good. See, I think I'm in the minority because The Fiend was absolutely phenomenal. The Fiend is, like, if F- The Fiend was done right, I think The Fiend could have rivaled, like, undertaker not the legend oh, but for the, sure but just the character sure. yeah but cult leader bray wyatt was so like enticing to me yep because they could have gone in so many different directions he could have i mean you could have explored storylines so much to where he could have had an entire locker room under his thumb like he could have done you could do anything an enigmatic like cult leader is such a intriguing character for less uh, for wrestling that has to be like you have to have the perfect person for it. Someone who is good in the ring, but on the mic is believable. And anytime cult leader Bray Wyatt grabbed a microphone, I believed everything he said or everything he put out there because he was just that good. And boy, uh, I wish great, we had so much more time. Great point with, uh, I am not ham here. He said he put Braun Strowman on the map and yep. I was actually at that raw in Brooklyn when Braun appeared and I'm pretty locked in. I had no clue who that guy was, Mm. but I saw he was massive and I knew he was with the Wyatt family. So I knew it meant something. And, and Bray had kind of hit that level even really, really early in his career where if you were going to be with him, uh, you were going to be, it was a sign that you were special. Luke Harper, obviously, not only with what he did in WWE, but what he went on to do before his life ended in AEW, was extraordinary. 
Luke is one of the great missed opportunities in WWE history. Like when he got to AEW, you saw, yo, that guy's a star. Mm. And for him, I got to believe he got like those two being together. They were able to learn uh, a lot from each other. Uh, again, just really, really sad that he's not here. Yep.